The eyes of other people are the eyes that ruin us. If all but myself were blind, I should want neither fine clothes, fine houses, nor fine furniture. The other day I was driving down the street with my family and we saw a house for sale. It was open for inspection, so I thought just for fun we'll go take a look. I was greeted by the salesman who immediately gave us a big smile and a handshake and asked me to write down my name, email address and phone number. I didn't really want to, but he was blocking the entrance and I knew he wasn't going to let me in until I filled out the paper. Yeah, I know, I could have just made up any old details, but I'm not really in the habit of lying. It just doesn't come very naturally to me. The house was a two-story place in a quiet neighbourhood. The salesman kept describing it as well-maintained and neat as a pin, which were all true, but he was kind of disguising the fact that the place was old. It was really old. Yeah, sure, the owners had looked after it with fresh paint and all the rest of it, but from the garage I could see the original floorboards above and they looked old. The place had a price tag of about $350,000, which I know isn't expensive for places like Sydney or Melbourne, but for regional Queensland, depending where you live, you could buy a brand new place for that price. Why would we buy a crummy old house that will probably need thousands of dollars in repairs in the not too distant future? It wasn't like we loved the location, we just happened to be driving past. Anyway, we thanked the agent for his time and tried to leave, but then he stood in the doorway and started asking all these pressing questions. How did you like it? It's a nice house, isn't it? Do you think you might be interested? When do you think you might know? Here's my card. Make sure you give me a call the moment you want to make an offer because this place will go fast. It's a great location, isn't it? The kids will love it. Neat as a pin. Clean as a whistle. It sounded like he was reading straight from the House Selling for Dummies book. When we asked for a brochure, he even went so far as telling us that the printer had run out of paper because this place was so popular. To be fair, I've never heard that one before. But the main point, he never used the word old. I get it. As a seller, you don't want to say anything negative. If I was a real estate agent, I'd probably say things like, yeah, it's a bit old, you'll probably have to pay a bit over the next few years to fix up all the foundations. I don't think these floorboards will last much longer, but I reckon if you set aside, say, ten or $20,000, that should be enough to fix them right up. Yeah, I would fail at being a real estate agent. So anyway, a few days later, actually on Sunday afternoon, he gave me the dreaded call. Again, he went on about how nice the place was and how I better act quickly before somebody else jumps in and buys it. I just told him that we were just not that interested, but he wasn't going to take no for an answer. He pressed me for more information. I told him that it was just a bit out of our price range, but then he went on about how the owners were willing to negotiate the price as they were looking to move out as soon as possible. I then told him that we were probably looking for something a little bit newer. He seemed a bit shocked and asked me what I meant. Well, I said, for that price, we could buy a much newer property. Then he interrupted me and started defending the house as if it was his house. He told me again how well the owners had maintained it and that we wouldn't find a better place in that location. I knew he wasn't going to give up easily, so I finally just told him that I had to go cook dinner for my children, which was true. I think he got the message, thanked me for my time, and hung up. Then I realised, I'm sick of houses. I'm sick of hearing about them. I'm sick of looking at them. I'm sick of people defending high house prices as if that's the way things ought to be. I'm sick of people coming up to me at work or at school telling me about their latest housing dilemma. Here's what I heard the other day. Oh yeah, we're thinking we'll have to upgrade our house soon. What do you mean? Well, you know, four bedrooms just doesn't feel like enough anymore. But you've only got three kids. Yeah, but each kid will eventually need their own room, and of course we need our room. Plus, Katie's going to high school next year and she'll probably need somewhere to study, and of course the other kids will need a rumpus room, so we're thinking we'll need at least a five-bedroom place. Ideally, we'd also want a separate study or an office because, you know, Barry wants to work more from home now. Of course, we'll probably need a separate playroom because I can't bear the kids messing up their own rooms all the time. You know what I mean, right? And we'll probably need at least a double garage if not a triple. Can you get triple garages? Maybe I could just have a double with an extra carport. What do you think? At this stage, I just tuned out. I'm not quite sure if they're asking me about coffee or garages, so I just reply with the catch-all. Yeah, that sounds good. Anyway, I get that sort of thing all the time. Here I am living in a tiny two-and-a-half bedroom rented flat, and these people bang on about how their four-bedroom mansion has become too small. My wife's friend already had a gigantic house in the rich part of the city. Her husband's a highly paid doctor. But recently, she started complaining about how her pool was way too small and not suitable for 
pool parties and the like. To cut a long story short, she ended up moving literally across the street to another mansion that had a slightly bigger pool. When my wife was telling me this story, I was just shaking my head. I realised I had enough. I'm just sick of hearing about houses. Of course, none of this means that I won't keep ranting about them on this channel, but buying a house is just not on my agenda anymore. Even if I did buy a house, it would never be as good as my colleagues or my wife's friends, so why bother? If we're happy where we live now, why would I bother wasting all my money trying to impress some people who are impossible to impress? How about you? Are you sick of houses? Or is it just me?